Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this, a very, very weird edition of the South Perth Library Reflect Talks, broadcasting direct to you from an empty library. But we're going to keep our spirits up and I really want to talk to you just briefly about this place. So call it Mindir up, call it the Men's Street Jetty, and I want to talk about its most famous visitor, which is this cute little fellow here in 1922. So we can't talk about him without talking about this guy. This is Joe Charles, the mysterious first mayor of South Perth. We don't actually know what his name is. It wasn't Joe Charles, that's for sure. Uh, he made his money through a rather crooked gambling scheme he called a consultation. So a consultation is essentially an illegal sweepstake on a horse, but it was illegal to sell such tickets. It wasn't illegal to sell boxes of tea. And if you went to see Joe Charles, he would sell you a very special box of tea, cost you about a pound each, and it just happened to have a certain number etched into the bottom, which just might correlate to a runner in a race later on that day. So that's the way they got around the law. Uh, he was much investigated and pilloried. Uh, the Sunday Times caught him possibly collecting the prizes on his own sweepstakes, wearing a different hat or something like that. But even after he fled east in a big hurry, nobody seemed to be too against him. His wife and son stayed, his son became a prominent politician as well. So I like to think of this as the beginnings of Lottery West. Fair bit of crooked gambling, but you get some good things out of it. Two good things came out of it. One is the ferry service, which pretty much runs exactly the same route as it always did, Men Street to Barrack Street. Charles and Copley set up that company in 1898 to respond to the opening of the zoo. And the other good thing that comes from crooked gambling is elephants. So the first zoo elephant was supplied by Joe Charles. He'd made a big song and dance about being a commercial traveller over in Singapore and he was going to buy an exotic elephant and donate it to the zoo. He got waylaid and wasted too much time and when he was back in Perth he had to get his hands on an elephant sharpish. So he bought one from a circus. Didn't turn out to be a very healthy elephant. So it only lasted at most a couple of years. So much later on, 1922, the zoo was booming. They'd been without an elephant for a good two decades or so. Very embarrassing situation. You can't really be a zoo without an elephant. So they enlisted the help of Jack Scadden, politician extraordinaire who was on a political trip to the Malay States. And he was given a diplomatic gift, which he was told was a young, tame female elephant, very good with children. Uh, when he arrived down at Fremantle, uh, this elephant turned out to be pretty much a teenage boy elephant who didn't think much of people at all. Indeed, on the voyage, according to the Sydney Sun, so it definitely must be true, Jumbo attacked the chief officer, Mr. Clayton, and fractured three of his ribs and bruised him very badly. The same night, the elephant broke his chains and started touring the ship. He fell through the hatch 20 feet down the hold and eventually was pulled out by wings and winches. So he had a rather inauspicious start to his time in Australia. The lumpers were unable to get him into the good sheds at Fremantle. He attacked them, so he had to stay in the steamer overnight. And eventually he was brought up on the Venus from Fremantle to South Perth. And on the South Perth jetty with a crowd of onlookers, they used the biggest goods crane they could get and lowered him bang onto the jetty. And for our best account of this, we have to turn to this guy my favourite author ever to come out of WA, Dryblower Murphy, a poet, kind of secessionist politician, all-round interesting fellow. I don't really believe he was indeed there, but Dryblower tells us about the crowd down at the Men's Street jetty. A huge crowd of residents, visiting golfers, lawn tennis flappers, mineral bath hypochondriacs, and turf advisors to the Bowling Green. And there was also a sprinkling of 200 visiting land agents, fish fictionalists, bargain sale housewives, and gouty old gents in between sun baths at the local distillery. So a grand day out in South Perth, Drive Law estimates it to maybe be 5,000 people, which is a pretty massive crowd for the area there around the Men's Street jetty. And with the help of the bosun from the ship, who was the only human being who could deal with Jumbaroo, they managed to walk him all the way along Men's Street, round the corner to Labishir Road and into the zoo. So there's one little nugget of South Perth history you may not have heard about. Trisha got the nod for the name of the new ferry. I submitted Jumbaroo and no one was listening to me. Uh, he was named by a young girl over in Nedlands. She won a competition, but Happy Jack seemed to stick. 
So a bit of a dig at Jack Scadden for giving them such an angry elephant. Many people have memories of rides on the elephant or seeing Trisha walking around Men's Street. That did not happen with Happy Jack. He hated people and was very much a danger. And after about 18 months, he was sold off to another circus. And that's where his story seems to end. I have evidence that his name was changed to Marge. I don't know how you call a massive male angry elephant Marge and get away with it. But he became such a cultural touchstone that for years and years afterwards, whenever there was news of something happening with an elephant, the newspapers in Perth would bring out the headlines of Happy Jack Kills Again. So stay safe, everybody. Wash your hands and stay tuned for the next weird Lips Reflect Talk. Thank you.